Hey, it's Sandra. Welcome to another episode of A Sexualize, my A Sexual Life. This is a place to be for education about A Sexuality, all things A Sexual, and I share my own A Sexual Life journey in order to help you and yours. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the great big subscribe button right down below, right here, right now. Please hit that bell icon to get notified of every time I go live right now or post a new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as we're going along if you're enjoying the content. If you don't know who I am, I am Sandra Bellamy, author of A Sexual Perspectives, 47 A Sexual Stories, Love Life and this A Celebration of A Sexual Diversity. I'm also the founder of Asexualize.com and the founder of A Sexualize Academy. Thank you for joining me. Well, tonight's episode is all about how to react when your best friend moves away and you have to say goodbye. So today has been a very uh, upsetting day for me because I had to do that today. And so I've had been with my best female friend. Um, I've known them for seven years now. I thought it was eight years, but it's actually since 2012 that I've known them. So we're in 2019 now. So seven years I've known my best female friend. Um, they're not asexual. In some ways, we're very similar, and in some ways, we're very different. And um, she's moving away, and so that is really, really tough. You know, I always knew it was likely to happen for a long, long time, though. So that partly prepared me, but I don't think anything quite prepares you for a best friend like moving away um, to a place that's harder to get to, takes longer to get to. I mean, she's not like in another country. She's still staying in this country. Um, but she's literally leaving, you know, leaving her jobs, leaving her current home, leaving all her friends behind uh, to be with her new guy. And how should you react if this situation happens to you? Well, you should react with love, kindness and compassion, whilst also being honest that you are upset about it. So it's important have some upset time you know you need to be upset you need to grieve for a friendship that is potentially going to be lost you know because the the relationship as you know it now is not going to be the same you know it's not going to be the same and when my friend um I'm going to get about sell this live stream when my friend hugged me she said oh we'll still be in each other's lives it'll just be in a different way that's all and I am going to get upset because she's my best friend. You know, I've known her for a long time. So the day was very, very difficult for me. So I woke up and I've been okay about it. I've been, you know, I have been upset initially and then I calmed down. And today, obviously, because this is the day I had to go and see her and say goodbye to her. Um, This was a harder day. Like I woke up in the morning, I was okay. And then I just burst into tears. And I thought I was crying so much that I wasn't going to be able to stop to go to see her, to say goodbye, but I did. And I held back all the tears while I was there. And then when I got home again, I was crying again. You know, and it's quite natural. You've got, you know, you have to let yourself be naturally upset. It's better to let it out than keep it pent up inside you. I've always said that on this channel. You know, some people don't like it when I cry on videos. Other people can understand it. And, you know, I don't want to do it to upset you, but I'm doing it just to because it is my life. You know, this this channel is all about asexualized, my asexual life. It's my asexual life that I reveal to you in the hope that you can relate to some of the videos at some point in your life. And these can help you, you know. And, you know, I basically tell you what's going on in my life because I think it's important you know all the different things I have to go through and she's not asexual you know she loves sex um and her other best female friend that's been friends with her for 15 years a very long time is very very upset you know because they've been friends for a long time and they see each other a lot because they live in the same town and um she is actually a sexual cougar her best other best friend um of 15 years she's a uh much much older I think she's in her 60s or more and she likes younger guys in their 20s so she's a real sexual cougar you know um and so that's her other best friend that's like that you know um and so today I went with by myself but I saw some other people there that were her friends as well and we all went together and there was a band on in one place that we went to. And then we were karaoke. I did karaoke for the first time ever in my life. I say the first time ever. Well, I've actually 
had a go at karaoke with just me and the actual karaoke DJ and my ex, uh, who wasn't my ex at the time, which can't really be classed as, kar- <laughs> as trying karaoke, really, Karen, because there's no audience. Do you know what I mean? But today I tried it for the first time and I sang Atomic Kitten um, Hole again and dedicated it to my friend who's leaving. So I, I said to her, I think I should do a song. And she said she'd love that. because She's a really, really good singer. So I'm always afraid of singing in front of her, you know, because I'm like, I haven't got the best voice in the world. And I didn't want to scare everyone off. But it went OK. I think some bits were a bit funny. They're like, oh, some bits when I played it back, are like, you really can't sing on this bit. And other bits were OK, actually. They're better than I thought they'd be. So part of that thing is really hilarious and funny because it's not that great singing. And the other bit, I'm like, oh, this is OK, actually. So, but it's quite easy to do. I thought I'd be petrified, but actually it was quite easy so, you know, I might do it again one day, but I just did it because I just sit there usually and just watch my friend doing karaoke and everyone else. And I just sit there like a lemon doing nothing. And I thought, well, I just give it a go, isn't it? I live, you only live once. And some people that do the karaoke, they are really, really bad. And I'm thinking, I don't think I can get this one guy, but he just doesn't care. He's happy to just sing no matter what, you know, and I, I really appreciate that type of attitude and personality so I just thought well I can't get seem any worse than he does bless his heart so you know I gave it a go and it was quite you know the uh, some of it was like hilarious because I just thought you can't sing these bits at all but the other ones were okay they weren't too bad you know wasn't too out of tune so it was all right it was all right I might do it again one day you know I quite wanted to do it again that day but I did it when there wasn't too many people in the pub but you know, it's still I still got people singing along with me, so that was nice. Uh yeah, so I tried that and uh yeah, and then my friend decided she was gonna go with us all to another pub at the end, but she decided to go bingo instead. So I went home early, which was a little bit weird, like when we've come to see her, but she did have friends at bingo um that she wanted to say goodbye to too. So I guess, you know, and her voice was going because she sang a load of times and she's got a problem with her vocal cords uh you know she's had problems with um she's been very poorly actually she's been in the hospital twice in the last 10 months with septicemia of the epiglottis and could have died twice so i'm really fortunate for her to be here in life you know and how you how should you handle it if your friends leaving you should always love them when they leave you know even though it's really difficult even though you might like feel bad because You know, she wants to start a new life, so I'm not sure how much she will actually keep in contact with me and her other friends. And a lot of her other friends and me have been very upset because the way she originally said it was like, I'm going to start a new life and it's kind of I'm going to forget about you, like cut off from you. But now she's kind of said that um, she still wants us in her life. But obviously she's moving away it's gonna be like like it takes me on the train about half an hour to get where she is now then where she's moving to is about an hour and 40 minutes something like it's like a long long time do you know what i mean it's like not just i can pop down the road or jump because i just literally jumped on the train five minutes from me today and went to see her where she currently lives you know so it's not gonna be easy it's like an hour and a 40 minutes like journey and i don't drive you know so it's going to be difficult to see her again. And, you know, she will have a new life. She's got a new guy who she's only known about six weeks and she's moving in with him. And when she's very brave and courageous, do you know what I mean? Um, And she's leaving her jobs and currently where she lives. And she lives with a guy who's been like a dad to her for years, even though they're not blood related. So she's leaving him and all her friends she's moving away from as well. So it's kind of like, whoa, do you know what I mean? It's very, very sudden. And so I've always known that she did want to move away, though, to to somewhere different and start over, kind of. Do you know what I mean? So I hope this guy's going to be really good for her. Obviously, with him only, her only known him about six weeks, moving in together is a huge, huge thing. But I hope he'll continue to treat her well and, you know, and be the best, obviously, with any relationship when someone gets into a relationship quickly with someone you do fear for them you know if I've been friends with that friend for years which I have I do fear for her because I don't know the guy and she doesn't really know him you know and you you know someone can be very very nice and kind and caring and wonderful and amazing in the beginning and then turn you you know we know this but it doesn't mean to say everyone's like that you know he's okay so far he's okay he's fine 
you know, I don't know him, but when I've met him, he's fine with me, you know, and he seems so far so good that he can give my best friend everything she's always dreamed of, you know. But I just, you know, I worry because I've had past abusive relationships and I don't, you know, these guys, they can give you the world until, you know, you do something that they don't like and they can turn on you. And I, I've known even, I had a friend, they, I wasn't even in a relationship with him. And I was quite close to him as a friend and then not asexual, um, not asexual at all. And then after 11 months, he turned and started getting nasty with me. So you never know. Do you know what I'm saying? And obviously, if she's given up her jobs, she's given up her home where she's everything currently going away from her friends, then it's it's a big deal, you know. But you can't when you when you are. When you have a best friend that's doing this type of thing, if you've got someone in your life right now and you've got a best friend and they're moving away for a guy or girl or whatever gender they've person they've only just met, you know, recently, it can be very tough because part of you wants to protect them and say, look, you know, you haven't known them long, what you doing? But the other part of you has to, hi, my life, nice to see you. But the other part of you has to know that that's not the right thing to do because what, what you want to do is you never, ever want to get on the wrong side of your best friend and make it feel difficult. Oh, hi, Andy. Nice to see you. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm glad you're on my stream. That's really nice. Thank you. My This is my life, by the way, Andy. Who's, my life's always on here. Andy's one of my best friends in case you didn't know. Um, so yeah, so when you've got um, a best friend that's moving away, and even if you, you're worrying for their safety and, and whatnot, because obviously she hasn't known this guy very long, like six weeks, part of your instinct is to say, you know, watch out, blah, blah, blah. But I just gently, all you can do is gently tell them, you know, I just gently told them, you know, I'm really happy for you. Think it's great. You Hopefully, you know, you'll get everything you want. And I want you to be really happy. This is how you have to speak. But you just say, you know, the only concern I've got, I think I said, is, you know, in case someone, I, I told her, I think you're being very, very brave. You know, my only worry would be, you know, about if anyone turned to be abusive later on, because, you know, I, because um, people can months later, and I use the example of the person who was just my friend who, who changed after 11 months. I spoke to my friend on the phone about it and they said, you know, so far, so good. The guy's fine at the moment. And, um, all right, go get dinner, my life. Off you go. Enjoy it. Um, so yeah, so I said about, I was a, a worried in case, um, in case, you know, the person turned to be abusive, basically. I, I tried to say that I had a friend for 11 years previously and they became bad like that after 11 months. And, they they said to me that they'd been because they've been married before and in a, in a relationship before and they said that you know they were in a relationship and after eight years the person turned abusive and they said so you can never know you know you could be with them a long time and never know so just knowing them doesn't mean to say they're not going to end up being abusive and so you know that she had a really good point when she said that on the phone to me I mean what what can you say to that? If she's saying it doesn't matter where you've known them six weeks or three years or whatever, you know, they could turn out to be abusive, you know? She had a very good point. The only point that I would say is obviously, you know, moving and giving up your jobs and everything for someone that you've only known about six weeks is very, very risky. But it's, it's also very courageous, you know? And I think you can look at it two ways. One is, it's, you know, like some people might say that's a crazy, it's a bit silly doing that because it's quite foolish because you don't know them. And other people could say it's very, very courageous, very brave of them and admirable that they're going for it. They're going for their dreams. They think this guy can give them their dreams and they're going for it, you see. And so the same situation can literally be seen in two completely different ways. And I think that's that's the point of life, you know. Every situation can be seen in two completely different ways. And, you know, it, well, it can be experienced in more ways, you know. You could have five people in a room, something happens in the room, and they all have different verdicts or they all have different um, meanings to what happened, you know. And I think that's really, really important that you understand that. Um, and so, you know, if you do have any concerns, you know, you cannot – 
a go at your friend and like attack them for what they're doing or or make them feel bad for what they're doing because they will just turn on you and not be your friend. I've learned that in my life. Never ever say to a friend they're doing the wrong thing. Hi, my life. That was quick. Um, never. So I've learned in my life, I was saying never ever to say to a friend that they're doing the wrong thing or you think, you know, you know, never put your foot down with a friend because they will always usually choose the romantic person over you. Even if you've been friends with them for a very, very long time, young number of years, never ever cross the line with romance. And I guess it's good I'm telling you this because there's a lot of aromantic asexuals on this channel, you know, those that lack romantic attraction. And this concept of um, someone that someone's just met and going to live with is and, and spend their life with when they've only known them six weeks, it's probably even more bizarre to an aromantic asexual why someone would even want to contemplate that. But you have to understand in the laws and dynamics of how relationships work and the experience I've had, you never ever want to get in between the person, the, the friend and their new partner. Never do that. I was quick because I eat in my room. I grabbed my food and went back to my room to eat. Oh, you eating now whilst watching me. Thank you, my life. So, um, so it's really important I let you know that, you know. Oh, so very true, the friend thing. It is, you know, I've learned that. Never ever become between a friend and a romantic partner, even if you want to scream at them that the person's no good for them. Like my best friend, who is uh, like I said, moving, who I had to say goodbye to, she has been in a relationship before with a guy who was drunk. And she was with him for a very, very long time, you know. And seriously, there was times when I felt like screaming, just get away from this guy. He is so bad. But you you can't do that. You just have to say, oh, well, I don't think that sounds very good. Or that's not so nice for you, is it? And words like that. But, you know, she she would jump to his defence. And that's what anyone usually does who's in a relationship with an abusive person a lot of the time or someone who's drunk. It's quite common for the partner, the good, the partner who's more, you know, the not the not the abusive one to, to defend the abuser because they they are trying to justify their behaviour because in any normal circumstances where romance is not involved you think you're crazy how can you be in that situation but I put up with abuse for years I did love kind of makes you insane sometimes you know you had that happen to you as well in my life yeah love does make you very insane sometimes you know there's good love and there's bad love you know and you know, there's toxic love, you know, just because you love a person doesn't mean to say they're right for you. Do you know what I mean? And and it's very difficult, you know, because when you're in an abusive relationship, it's love in some way sometimes, but it's like your mum. Yeah, I'm really sorry about your mum. Really sorry. It's really difficult when it's a parent. You know, it's like toxic love, you know, it's not healthy love. It's toxic and deadly like a poisonous snake. Um, but, you know, so you, but you can never come between a best friend and their boyfriend. You can say to them, give your, you know, you can say it, but you've got to be very careful how you say it. So you can, you know, like when she was with the drunkard, I'll, I'll be like saying, honey, that doesn't sound very good. Or he shouldn't be behaving like that towards you and, and saying stuff like that. So I would say so. Be, be, be like, oh, he's he's been working for twelve hours. So you know he comes home drunk because you know he just has to drink because he's been working twelve hours. It's like there's other people that do twelve hours. They don't even have any alcohol. Do you know what I mean? I can't be myself around my mum. Wish she was like other mums. Yeah, I know. Have you seen the film Coraline though? In my life, have you seen Coraline? It's a cartoon. Your boyfriend hates alcohol. Oh, good for your boyfriend. I don't drink alcohol. Like tonight when I was out, it was difficult because there's loads of people that drink and I don't drink. There was a good looking guy, though. <laughs> Never seen it. Oh, Coraline is a cartoon, right? And it has a message in it. And it this this girl doesn't like her parents. She doesn't get on with her parents. I don't I'm not saying it's the same situation as you because I know what your mum's like. She's extremely. Uh, can't talk to her and 
do you know what I mean? Controlling and uh, abusive in the controlling sense, even though she probably does love you still. Um, but in, in the film Coraline, basically the moral of the story is Coraline doesn't get on with her parents. She doesn't like her life with her parents. She doesn't think her parents are very good. She goes into this other world, meets this ideal mum and dad, and they turn out to be a mum and dad from hell. And then she appreciates her real mum and dad and has to get back to them, trying to escape. So, yeah, um, I mean, there, there are, you know, there, maybe there's some mums that are more understanding than yours, but don't forget there'll be some mums out there that are worse than yours as well. I mean, I know someone, I know someone whose mum is worse than, yeah, I think their mum so far, from what they told me, is one of the worst mums I've ever heard of, like the highest forms of abuse she gave to them. And um, I can't go into it because it's confidential, but I've never, ever heard much more horrendous stuff than that. Um, you have a school mum. That's good. It's really good. You've got good um, figures in your life. You know what I mean? Like father figure and mum figure and teachers that really good figures in your life. So it's good you've got them because not everyone has that. You know, I, I was bullied at school. I didn't have really anyone to turn to. Do you know what I mean? So it's good you've got people to turn to. But yeah, really good. I think it's just, I just wanted to do this video, you know, because... You, you know, if you if you do have to say goodbye to a friend, which I did today, you know, you have to um, you have to cry because it's like grieving. You're grieving for the loss of a friendship. Even though you might stay friends, that friendship is not going to be the same. And, you know, I don't know that I'm going to see my friend again. Like this could be the last time theoretically I ever see her because unless she comes to see me or I go to see her, which is 140 minutes now, and, you know, she's working and whatnot. If I don't have the money, then it's going to be really, really hard. I've had many friends move and it, it sucks. I mean, this she's the, the, the difficulty with this friendship. I really hope you do see your friend again. Thank you, Andy. The difficulty with this friendship is that I didn't really have any. I mean, Andy's the best friend now, so I'm glad about that. And Sam is as well, is my other best asexual friend. So I'm really glad I've got Andy and Sam in my life. And it's really, really important to me. Really important. Like, you wouldn't believe. But but uh, this friend, <laughs> thank you. This friend is closest to me in terms of distance. Do you know what I mean? At the moment. But, you know, like half an hour train journey. But she's going to be much more further away. Now she's starting a new life. You know, she's going to have work eventually. You know, different hours. Then she's going to be spending all the time with her partner. She's going to get a new karaoke. She goes to karaoke. She easily makes friends wherever she goes. So I have no worries about like that. That's the other thing. Even though I'm a little bit concerned because she's only known him six weeks. To be fair to her, she's a very strong woman. She can take care of herself. Whatever happens, even if something did happen between them, I know eventually she'd be fine because she's very strong, independent. She can easily make friends wherever she goes. <laughs> Hi, new friend. Yeah, Andy's amazing. Um... And um, she can easily make friends wherever she goes. So I know that she's going to be absolutely fine. Do you know what I mean? I know she's going to be absolutely fine. And she's the first person that has ever been a true friend to me, like Andy is and um, Sam is. But until until that time, like, I've known this friend, like I said, for seven years. So um. Before then, like I never had any true friend when I was a kid. Not really. Well, I got one person that I'm not close. They're not close friend, but they were always a true friend in the sense that they did stick up for me when I was being bullied. Um, and I know them from school, and I still see them. So they're still a true. I still see them, like, but not very often. Like I always go to see them as well. They don't come and see me. Um, so yeah. And the last few times I've tried to see them, they like say stuff like they got a headache, and I'm like, really? I mean, I hope it's true, but do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, well, whatever. 
like I like people who really want to see me and spend time with me. Do you know what I mean? So like this best friend that I, I had to say goodbye to today, they're the first person that actually made an effort to come and see me that actually wanted to spend time with me and would do whatever it took to, to do that, you know? And so that's why it's very difficult. My first five friends, still friends with four of them, saved my life. Wow. They saved your life. That's incredible. Did they save it? Um, physically or did they save it in terms of like mind and soul do you know what I mean because you can save someone's life physically as in stopped you from killing yourself for example or they can save your life as in you were suffered depression and felt suicidal and about death and dying a lot and the friends changed your mind and saved your life in that way which do you mean because fibromyalgia saved my life even though it sounds weird, it's a disability for life. That's what I was trying to say on the video yesterday. It literally saved my life because I stopped being depressed because of fibromyalgia. So my disability for life saved me from having been depressed for life. So, yeah, I look at it as a blessing. Um, I met them in first grade. I was going down a dark path and was thinking about things till they changed my life around. I told them years later and two of them cried. That is wonderful, my life really it is. I'm glad they saved your life. I'm really glad. It's, you know, it's amazing when you've got good friends like that can, can save your life, literally. Because people think, a lot of people think saving lives is a physical thing, but a lot of the time, it's not so much that. It's a mental thing. Um, because even if you physically stop someone from doing something, that's one thing which I have done in my life, but you've got, but um, I've stopped someone killing themselves. And um, the fact I was in first grade and starting to think that stuff scares me. Yeah, it's horrible. I used to suffer depression. It's very, very dark. Did you see yesterday's live stream? I think, oh yeah, you did. And I got ill, didn't I? I had to go and off and eat. I think you see it's all part of it. I don't know if you've watched all of it. But um, I used to suffer depression really badly. And depression is like a really, really deep, dark hole that you go down and you can't get out of it. It like, feels like you're trying to scramble up some earth up the side of a bank and it doesn't matter what you do. The earth just keeps flowing back and you with it and you can't get out of the hole. It's very, very, very difficult. The kids and teachers believed me because I was different. Yeah. Uh, my teachers didn't bully me, but I got bullied because I was different. I had very, very few friends till I hit high school. Well, I didn't have hardly any friends at primary school, hardly any friends at secondary school. And even at college, I didn't have many friends either. So most of the time, I just used to be on my own. This is the only, this is the first, first, only first real friend I had uh after I left college was the friend I had to say goodbye to today obviously I've got Andy and Sam now in my life which I'm so thankful for like you wouldn't believe but you know it was it's really hard like I had this friend one friend in primary school she ended up she was a very very selfish person and it was all one-sided and then one day I said oh, I wish uh, my hamster died and I said oh, I wish I was dead and she goes oh, I wish you were too and that's it I wasn't friends with her after that I mean, how could you say that to me? Wish that I was dead. It's horrible. I used to be naive till I hit ninth grade. Then I started growing more witty. I used to have terrible depression, anxiety. Sandra's book and meetups changed my life. Thank you, Andy. I'm going to read that out again because it's so nice what Andy said. I used to have terrible depression slash anxiety. Sandra's books and meetups changed my life. That's really, really nice. I think that's pretty sweet. I know Andy's. Oh, thanks for the thumbs up. I know Andy said that to me before in a private message. It's really nice you put it publicly. <laughs> it's really nice. I know Andy's told me I've changed his life. It's really nice to be able to do that for someone. Like, I just think it's like, I feel like I'm going to be shy now. I feel like it's really nice. Thank you. Yeah, I know Andy's life has actually changed. I can see that. I can't deny it. I, he has really changed, like, dramatically, like, in the last year. Amazingly. 
yeah, really amazingly doing so well. Really, really different person in many ways. Really, really good. So I'm glad that I helped you. Yeah, even the fibromyalgia book helped as well. Uh, I got confidence to call my boyfriend babe. Wow, and talking to him, and he's chilled with it. Oh, that's so sweet. My life. Um, Andy won't know, but my life is in a relationship. My life is asexual, but her boyfriend is. Ah, uh, oh, sorry, their boyfriend isn't. And um, my life's gender fluid, and um. Their boyfriend isn't, but their boyfriend was their best friend for three years before they got into a relationship together. And they got into a relationship in August this year. And they're very, very romantic together. And it's like, seriously, my life, you and your boyfriend are like something out of a movie. <laughs> like my one of my favourite romance movies. I feel like I'm watching a romance movie unfold before my eyes. It's really nice, actually. Yeah, it's really nice. You know, they're not asexual, their boyfriend, but their boyfriend's really, really, really nice. I honestly, I feel like I'm in a romantic movie with you guys. It's really incredible. I'm like, they say that you can't have romance like that, but, you know, they can. You can have romance. It's absolute rubbish when they're like, oh, it's not realistic. I'm thinking, well, yes, it is if you make it happen. You've just got to make it happen. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, if I lived in a realistic life, I would never do anything I do. Do you know what I mean? Like, I get what they're saying in part, but I think you've got to, if you have two people that are very similar, that both want similar things, that are very romantic together and both like that, then I think it can really work because you can make it work. Like, my life's boyfriend gave her this most amazing rose. I mean, gave, gave them the most amazing rose. It's incredible. The rose he gave you is incredible because I saw it on Twitter, didn't I? Absolutely, like, beautiful. Uh, like a yellow colour it looked like on Twitter with, like, was it, like, little red bits around the edges or something? It's really, really pretty. It's so romantic, you know, and I love it because um, my friend's sister is going to be having a baby, by the way, for more amazing news. Well, I'm happy for your friend's sister. I don't personally do babies because I'm not into having kids, but um, I'm really happy for your friend's sister, because if they're happy, then I'm happy, because I think everyone should be happy doing what they want and enjoying life as they have it. So I think that's really good. So congratulations to you and to your friend's sister. Yes, very important. I'm not a baby person. I just, I get on really well with kids. I'm very, very good with kids, actually. Very good. Like when, even when I used to be a kid in birth certificate age myself, I used to get other kids, like if they were lost, they'd come and find me to get to get help help get help to find their parents even though I was like only 16 I think and stuff like that like a teenager myself so I wasn't you know I was older than them but I still wasn't old old if you know what I mean I remember this girl was around Tesco and she lost her mum and I remember I was at a carnival once and this girl just put her hand in my hand and started watching the carnival with me and I didn't even know her and she was a kid. So I do actually go on very, very, very well with children. But I just don't want them off my own. I'm not a baby person at all. Other news, I asked my boyfriend if he'd go to any future dance with me at school. If I asked and he said, yes, good. I love it. Seriously, he sounds like a really good guy for you. I really think your boyfriend sounds good for you. And I, I think it's so good you found someone as well that's happy with your asexuality. You know, it's rare to get. This guy sounds like a very rare find. I always hold on to people who are rare finds. Do you know what I mean? Because it is hard. To, yeah, it's really hard to find someone like you've got. You know, so far they sound amazing, you know. And I, I'm glad that you you two appreciate each other because there's some people in relationships and they just don't appreciate each other or they get to a certain stage in their relationship and they're like, oh, I'm not going to appreciate the other person. And well, it's not like they're consciously aware of it. It's like they're unconsciously, oh, you know, not appreciating each other anymore. They're taking each other for granted in the relationship. But so far with you two, it's really, really tenderness and really, really romantic and brilliant and lots of communication which is really good and talking and my life you're very assertive as well which I have to give you really good credit for it's really important to be assertive and say what you want in a relationship and in a friendship as well seems we're talking about friendship in this video as well but yeah it's like this is what I was saying in the video though never ever become between someone and their partner because if if it's a romantic partner usually they will always put their I'm not talking about you specifically my life I'm talking about the general 
public, the general population will usually always put their romantic relationship before anything else in their feelings. Feelings and emotions are so powerful. And, you know, I've learned in my life never to get in the way between a friend, someone who's a best friend and their partner. You just don't do it. Even if you don't are not keen on the partner, even if you don't think they're good for them, you have to just be very careful what you say, careful what you do in regards to the partner. If you don't like them or there's something about them, you have to kind of keep it mostly to yourself whilst, you know, saying something, if they say something to you, it's, it's kind of difficult. You can say, if you do have a, a worry, you can say, it. you have to say it in a really kind, caring, non, how can I put it? I mean, it's judgmental. So you've got to be kind of be like, just like more casual about it. It's really hard to say. Indeed, never mess with someone's bond with a mate. Yeah, you just can't do it. I mean, I know in asexuality, it's really difficult for people to understand, especially people who aren't romantic. But believe me, romantic love and romantic partnership is just the strongest bond ever. And nothing can break it. And if you try and come between it, it just doesn't work. It literally is is not good. I know I've known in my life that you never get you never, ever slag their partner off for example even if you don't like them even if they're the most horriblest person in the world, you just have to like grin and bear it for their sake do you know what I mean you have to try and see their point of view and you have to try and not interfere and because if you do it will end up that, that that your friend won't be your friend and they will side with their partner I know that's really bad to say and I know it's really harsh but it's the truth that's what I've learned in my life you know you never ever, you know, you be supportive of them with their part. You be supportive, like with my best friend at the moment, you know, the person who I had to say goodbye to today. I will always support her no matter what guy she's with. Always. Whatever happens, I've always been supportive of her from day one. I mean, she's had about four boyfriends in four months, I think it's this year. So um, that's quite a lot. And uh, but every time I've, I've tried to be supportive, you know, because I mean, what I didn't even know about till she told me she split with him. So that was a bit weird. But um, so she can't be with him that long. But, you know, I'm hoping this guy carries on being really good for her. You know, I did question him in front of her. I said, why? Because I didn't. She said he hadn't been married before, but he said he had when I met them both together for 40 minutes, 40, 50 minutes the other day. I thought it's. I actually think it's a good thing he's been married before for a long time because it has longevity. It's a good sign, really. If he'd not been married before, I would think it's a bit weird at his age. One of my exes, whose soul I've cursed, I had tried to separate me and my friends and wanted me to move to his state away from everyone I knew. He got me to almost hate my friends, so I saw what he was doing. Yeah. That's the only concern, obviously, I do have with my friend that's moving away is that she's only known this guy six weeks and she's leaving everything behind for him. But I know she wanted to start a new life anyway. She wanted to move out of where she currently lives because it's not healthy for her because it's quite mouldy. So she wanted to do that. She wanted to get rid of her jobs because she's been very poorly in hospital, like twice in 10 months and could have died both times with septicemia of the epiglottis septicemia as you know people die from septicemia the doctor told her especially the christmas one that she could have died they were so worried about her she had to rush to hospital so and i saw her on a breathing you know having you know she had a tube she couldn't breathe by herself so uh you know so she's you know so she wants to stop working like 60 hours a week and slogging her guts out and you know, this guy's got a really nice house. He's He owns it and he's got money and it's a really nice place he lives in. And I've seen some pictures. There's like a nature reserve behind it. It's near the coast where she loves. I mean, if everything is exactly as he, it appears to be, obviously appearance is not the same thing as actuality, then it's going to be a beautiful life for her and it's going to give her everything she's always dreamed of because he likes traveling and so does she. He's a biker and she loves that type of lifestyle. She loves the biker life. And so, you know, it's going to be amazing. 
But, you know, that is the one thing that I do worry about my life. I worry about in case he does become abusive. It's a natural thing when someone, you know, when you're giving up everything, moving with someone in a very short space of time, it's a natural thing to think because it is one of the signs of someone who could end up being abusive. But at the moment, he's not giving any other signs that he might be that. I mean, he does message quite a bit, I think, today, like when, but, you know, like guys do message who really like girls, really, you know, that some, you know, like some people just message all the time, you know, which I think is quite nice. So when I met him and when I he showed me pictures and stuff, it all seems quite good. So I'm really hoping that he's just a wonderful guy that he seems to be. Um, every time my spirit mother, mother from a past life said she felt something was off about a boyfriend, she was right. She's like my current she likes my current boyfriend and thinks he's good for me. I text a lot. Yeah, I do like texting a lot in a relationship as well. So I text a lot. Um, I love her. I love a guy who texts me in the morning saying good morning. I love a guy who texts me good night. I love a guy who asks me throughout the day how my day's getting on. That's like my ideal type of relationship. Do you know what I mean? Whereas most people are not into that. I find it really hard. Like in the asexual community, there's quite a lot of people that aren't into that. And it's like, well, I don't live with a guy. I don't want to live with a guy. But, you know, I want him in my life daily as if I am in a relationship with him. Even, you know, even, well, obviously, if I was in, I'm talking about if I was in a relationship with him, you know, like, I would want him in my life daily as if he was there with me, even though he's not there, if that makes sense. Like, I still want the connection. I think for me personally, with asexual love and romance I need to be constantly connected to a guy if I was in a relationship with him like constantly like feeling like I was with him even though I'm not with him and then it would make me feel really secure and happy do you know what I mean even if I wasn't seeing him every day uh because obviously I don't want to live with someone I know you you want to live with your boyfriend it's a bit different for you but I do like texting a lot. I think I think I honestly think that your partner should be your bestest ever friend I just think they should do you know what I mean it's it's just like I mean I I mean like you said you with three years you were best friends found out my boyfriend's favorite activity is gaming and I was like yes oh that's really good it's really good my life I love it when you say about your boyfriend because he guides you towards the light I think I think he's a little angel for you he seems really really good person for you he seems to really care about you and we all need these angels in life and this is another thing I was going to say to you about friends moving on you know you have to detach to a certain extent and realize that people have their own lives and that some will move away you know like other friends you know when they get partners they will possibly move away it's just the way it is and I found out my oh he mostly plays Minecraft my favorite game ever oh that's great my life I'm really happy for you really really happy for you I still have contact with one friend that moved away thanks to Instagram. Yeah. I mean, my friend did say that we'll still be in each other's lives just in a different way. And she's friends with me on Facebook. And she, but the thing is, she doesn't always answer my texts. She'll, she'll say to me when I say, oh, I've been keeping up with all your videos on Facebook. I've been keeping up with all your, all your posts, which is great. So she does keep track of my life and she will continue to do that, I think. But it's kind of like sometimes I just wanted to answer my message quickly back, do you know what I mean? Or answer me back at all would be nice because it's like, otherwise it feels like you're having a one-way conversation, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so don't get me wrong, I'm glad she follows me on there. And she, you know, so we'll always be connected. And I've got a new address she gave me, which is nice. So, you know, I, I just like, I'm really happy for her. That's the thing as well when you have a friend that moves on. Questions, it's about love question about love you've got a question or you mean that it's about love that we're talking about um but if you've got a question about love you can carry on asking me if you want but um yeah I mean you know when you do love a friend you've got to let them go as well which is always hard do you know what I mean that's one of the hardest things to do but you know you've got to I'm kind of used to doing that in the past but it's it's difficult Christmas is coming in several months. Well, it's coming, it, well, it's the 1st of October next week in 2019 when this video is going live. So, yes, you should get your boyfriend a present for Christmas. A kiss under the mistletoe. There you go. That's a good Christmas present. Sorry. 
<laughs> That's me being romantic. You know what I'm like? 24-7, 365 days a year, kiss under the mistletoe. A walk in the park under the moonlit stars with a kiss under the mistletoe. Sounds great. Should I be sneaking put mistletoe above me and my boyfriend on Christmas? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm like? You're asking someone who's a hyper romantic here. I think you should have some mistletoe. And I think you should say, um, what's that? Oh, I think that's mistletoe. What do you meant to do under mistletoe? I forgot. <laughs> and with a little cheeky grin. <laughs> Early unscheduled kiss. I know, but that's a naughty thing. I love naughtiness. Like asexual naughtiness is so much fun. Do you know what I mean? Like to sexuals, that would be nothing. But to asexuals, an early unscheduled kiss. I mean, that'd be so hot and steamy, wouldn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, even though it doesn't have to be a hot and steamy kiss, it's just a kiss. It could just be like a little kiss. It's kind of a, like a naughty, hot and steamy thing, isn't it? It's like, oh, I'm kissing you under mistletoe. Well, that's what I class as naughty. But then I'm like a kid, aren't I? So, <laughs> exactly. I'm like a teenager. So to me, that's really naughty. It's like, like you say, it's an unscheduled kiss. It's like a forbidden territory. Do you know what I mean? In a nice teenager, um, wholesome way. That's what I love. Do you know what I mean? I love all the wholesome romance teenager stuff it's just beautiful like do you know what I mean yeah get an unscheduled kissing <laughs> see this is Christmas it'll be your first Christmas together you've got to christen christen the Christmas with a kiss <laughs> that sounds so good christen Christmas with a kiss I think that sounds brilliant rebel I am a rebel actually that's why if I had a boyfriend I need a young boyfriend I can sit on his lap because that to me is very naughty, but it's nice. <laughs> like a cream cake. <laughs> Sorry, that's a bad connotation to use. Prank to get him to kiss me. Well, it's not a prank. It's a nice thing to get him to kiss you. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of those naughty kid ways of getting him to kiss you, isn't it? I mean, I wouldn't say prank because prank sounds like it's it's silly and you're just trying to cause a joke with him and you it's a serious thing so you don't want it to be a joke joke do you know what I mean so um sometimes when people are in relationships or when they're thinking about getting a relationship they'll say stuff like they you know they use the laugh out loud in a not a good way they'll use the laugh out loud as as much as I don't really mean what I just said but they do and so always be careful of that. So you don't want it to be a prank. You want him to be like feeling like it's really romantic and, and oh, <laughs> oh, I didn't expect this. Oh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like all that warm and fuzzy feeling. Do you know what I mean? Like I love teenager romance. Like I, that's the type of relationship I want 24 7, 365 days a year. You've got to find mistletoe now. Yeah. <laughs> we quickly, where's the mistletoe tree? Do you know what I mean? Because I last the type of love, like how you are with your boyfriend. I like 24 seven, really. Apart from my, I'd be kissing by now. Cause you know what I mean? Oh, what if I get a friend? What if I get a friend in on it? Mm, I think it should just be between you two. Don't you think? It's very personal. You should be able to get it from a shop or something. You might be able to ask a friend if they know where to get it from, but you should just Google it. Google shops or garden centres in your area or something, or just Google where do I get mistletoe from in your area. So if I want to get mistletoe in Exeter, where I live, you can't get mistletoe. Well, not yet you can't because it's not coming up Christmas. I think it's something they only do in the shops near Christmas, but they usually sell them in wreaths and things like that. Mom won't let me leave the house without her. Oh, yes, but just pretend it's a decoration because you can have it as a decoration just in the house. You might be able to get away with it. Do you know what I mean? Or get your boyfriend to get some. That's a good idea. That's a good hint, isn't it? Get your boyfriend to say, oh, we don't celebrate Christmas. Oh, gosh, I love Christmas. Like, I'm not strictly religious. I don't even I don't even really think about Christmas and religion as do you know what I mean when I celebrate Christmas I don't think I'm religious I'm celebrating Christmas I just think I love the Christmas lights the Christmas trees the Christmas decoration everything about Christmas because it's magical and fun that's what I like about Christmas one one year I would love to spend Christmas in Disneyland Paris one year it'd be amazing yeah you don't because religion yeah but I'm not strictly religious even if I wasn't at all religious I would still celebrate Christmas because I just love it as a thing to do 
because I love magic. To me, it's like a celebration. Do you know what I mean? It's like a celebration of life celebration. It's just a celebration for a celebration. I love celebrating everything. I'm a Christian, but mine doesn't celebrate holidays or birthdays. Oh, uh, well, I just like, I, I, you're more religious than I am, but you know, I love my birthday. I love birthdays. Like my best asexual friend, my other best asexual friend, um, exceptions. I think you mean with a, a with an E X, isn't it? It's an E X E X C E P T I O N S exceptions. Um, yeah, so Andy is coming down for my birthday, friend's birthday meetup, which is Sam's meetup, which we're having on the 27th of October next month. So their birthday's on the 28th of October and the group meetup is on the 27th. So they are celebrating their birthday for the first time this year or the first time in a long time. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing that. And they don't usually celebrate their birthday, but they are this year. Because they and they've chosen me to do a meetup, and we're going out for their actual birthday day together. We're going to the aquarium, uh, Nando's for a meal, and to watch Terminate movie. And they didn't used to celebrate their birthday because I love birthdays. God, I'm so excited. I'm sneaky. I live life my way. Yes, my life. You live it your way. That's why I like your my life title within Bible standards, but out of the people standards. I think things change in time. Yeah, but you can always ask your boyfriend to get you some mistletoe. <laughs> That's the biggest hint of all. Oh, I've heard mistletoe is good for kissing underneath. Hmm, I can't get out any. Could you get me some, please? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Ask him to get you some. He's a man. Go go and get some. Get, get him to get that manly bit of mistletoe. <laughs> I know I'm being very stereotypical here. Wait, you've got an idea. We're what me and you are full of ideas. We must tell everyone 55,000 ideas. We're on the stream, I think. Yes, I'm waiting for your idea now. But yes, so um, what was I saying about this video? Yeah, like my life uh, agreed as well. It's really important that if you have got um, a friend who's leaving, then, um, then you literally, you know, you have to um, obviously grieve. Uh, uh, which I've mentioned before, and then my life agreed that um, don't ever get in the way between a best friend or a friend and their romantic partner, because you know the romantic bond is just the most strongest bond, and even though um, you might not think it, it is. So you just don't come in between because they will always see the good in their partner. Usually, even though their partner's not very nice, they will always see them good. I'll ask if he can get it so I can put it over my two friends that are dating. And as soon as he hands it to me, I'll put it over us. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's good. But you're in a relationship, aren't you? Rather than dating. Aren't you in actually in a relationship? You two, I'd say. I don't wouldn't say you're dating, are you? Because you sound to me like you're actually in a relationship because they're your boyfriend. Dating is usually before they're officially your boyfriend, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So, um, oh, you and your boyfriend are dating. All oh, right, okay, but he's your boyfriend, <laughs> so you're you're boy you're dating your boyfriend as well as him being your boyfriend. Okay, that's quite cool. You should always date your partner anyway. <laughs> you should always be dating, as in having dates. It's really important. But yeah, it's really good. I think that's a good idea. I think it's different in USA. Yeah, so basically, well, all over the world, dating usually comes before a relationship. So you do, um, theoretically speaking, you do, um, yeah, it'd be quite good for the rest of the people that are watching this as well. So basically, like, you, you, I, I've never been into dating as such. Um, if you, so this is United States, if you say someone is your boyfriend or girlfriend, you're dating. Oh, right. Well, in the UK, it's yeah, if you're if you said someone's boyfriend or girlfriend, it means you're in a relationship with them, you're past the dating stage and you're an item, you're together, you're not dating other people. So if you're in a date, if you're dating, it means you can see other people, as in you could potentially end up in a relationship with someone else. You're not exclusive, you're seeing other people. You're so so for example, if I was dating, I might be seeing one guy on Wednesday for a meal. 
with a, a view to potentially be in a relationship with them. I might be seeing another guy on Sunday and going out dancing with them or something. I might be doing something else with another guy the following week. And, and that's, you know, as far as I knew, dating was the same thing because I watched dating coaches from the USA as well. As far as I knew, it was the same thing that you date first. I thought that was universal throughout the world. You date first uh, and then you officially ask someone to be your boyfriend or girlfriend and then you're in a relationship. However, when you're in a relationship, you should still have date nights to have a good, healthy, happy relationship. So if you're in a relationship, you should set a, a night, one night at least a week to have a date night together. Like some, a couple that used to be in my old job, actually they split up now, but she used to be uh, with her boyfriend, used to every Wednesday go out on a date together, as in for a meal or to the cinema or both together, you know? So any relationship, however many years old, you should always have like a one day of the week, you should have a date night together to keep the relationship alive, fresh, switch off your mobile phones, switch off your social media, just pay cl very all that attention for that several hours just with the person you're with. In USA, going on a date isn't the same as dating. Dating means you're with one person, boyfriend or girlfriend, unless Polly. If you say you're dating someone here, it means you just got with them. That's it. I've never heard of that before. It's very interesting. Is that only in certain parts of the USA? Because I do watch USA dating coaches and I do, as well as British coaches, as far as I know. Um, all over. So if you say you're dating, it means you're 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 just with them. That's it. Yeah, that's not the same as I've ever known. Dating means like you're seeing several people, then when you become in a relationship, you're in a relationship or no longer dating, but you still can have dates within the relationship. Speed dates and online are different. Well, when you're dating someone, you're getting to know someone before deciding where you want to be in a relationship with them. That's the point of dating, whereas I've in the past usually skipped all the dating and just gone straight for the relationship because I don't really see a point in it a lot of the time because I don't like I don't like the concept of dating but I understand why it's important so the concept of dating is that you see several different people before you make a decision about whether to be in a relationship with them or not that's the point of dating um I know you're saying in USA is different, but I've never heard of a coach saying that because all the dating coaches talk about dating someone before it being a relationship. In UK, dating is equivalent to speed dates or online. In UK, dating is equivalent to speed dates or online. No, because you can get dating in real life. There's plenty of people that go online in dating sites and then you meet up with someone in person for a date. That's the whole point of dating. You take it from online to offline and start dating. That means going to the cinema, going to movies, going to dates together. But when you declare you're in, when like, so if I was dating a guy potentially for two or three months, you're not officially in a relationship till I wouldn't be officially in a relationship until the guy actually said to me, do you want to be in a relationship with me? Yes or no. Or I could end up in a relationship where he didn't directly ask me, but we kind of knew I was we were anyway because we're exclusive together. Like you'd ask them, like, "Oh, are you seeing anyone else, or are you just seeing me?" If they said, "Like you're just, I'm just with seeing you," like that's it. Then you'd be like, uh, exclusively dating each other or something, and then asking to be in a relationship. Apparently, that's how it works. But I've never in the past, I never used to do dating. I just used to either be single or in a relationship because. Dating, I don't like the idea of being with a guy who's going around seeing um going around seeing lots of women. Do you know what I mean? But dating's not in the old days, in the 60s, 70s, eight, like it used to be called courting. So when my parents have been married for 50 years, five zero years, right? And back then it used to be called courting, C-O-U-R-T-I-N-G, which is equivalent to today's dating, which is basically when you're seeing each other. And you want a relationship with each other, but you haven't asked each other to be in an official relationship. That's like the old fashioned equivalent of dating these days. But obviously, 
online you go on online dating sites but it's only if you like then if you want to meet someone for a date you go and meet them in real life in person offline but the whole point of dating is you're meant to see several people for like two or three months before deciding on one and I just find that really hard because I don't like that personally it just really rubs me up the wrong way I'm thinking why do I want to date a guy who's interested in dating other women surely that's a bad thing for a start do you know what I mean but they're like the dating coaches advise women to do that like I should be doing that but it's like I get the theory behind it because it's better than just jump into a relationship with one person but I just I like black and white I'm either I'm with someone or I'm not with someone I'm in a relationship or I'm out of a relationship I don't really do the middle ground thing do you know what I mean the middle ground just muddles my mind confuses me makes me feel I don't know where I'm coming or going and just oh god something's gone in my eye oh it makes me feel like I don't know where I'm coming or going I don't know what that was going in my eye then oh it makes me feel like I don't know whether I'm coming or going do you know what I mean and so um I hope it wasn't a fly or something going in my eye oh but, um, you know, I don't, I just don't, USA is very different and some phrases have multi meanings, but one is the main definition over the others. Yeah, I do. You are right, though, that um, different countries have different meanings, don't they, for words? Um, yeah, because I learned something about it's like there, 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 it all sounds the same, but each is different. Yeah, I get you. I never knew that about USA, though, because I do listen to some dating coaches that are in the USA, you know. And as far as I knew, they, it was all, well, obviously, if you're saying it's not, it's not, then. But yeah, I've never, ever heard of dating being, you know, like in a relationship. Never heard of that before. I have to do look up stuff more. It's good to know. Very good to know. But it's like I've never ever um I've never liked the concept of dating though. I don't like the idea. I know the the theory behind it, but it's just like I think like why would I want to be even thinking about being in a relationship with a guy if he's literally seeing four or five different women to me? I mean, what if if I kiss him, I'll feel like he's been kissing the other women and I'll feel like I'm kissing someone who's just kissed other women and it's kind of gross because it's like I don't want to taste other women in his mouth. Thanks very much. That freaks me out. And then another thing is like, I'm like, why would I even want to contemplate a guy who's going around dating four or five women? Why? Because if he doesn't know I'm the one for him, then there's no point in even going there. What's the point? Just like go and be with someone else. And that's how my brain works. It's very black and white. It's like, well, if the guy's just interested, if the guy really likes you, he'll just be interested in you. He won't care about other women. So he wouldn't date other women. He'd just be interested in going for you. That's it. End of story. Not interested in anyone else. And so I just don't like the whole concept of dating, to be quite honest with you. You know, which dating, which I, I've known as a wide concept of like, you know, seeing someone. Like I was dating a heterosexual guy for two months in 2017, right? Dating him. We weren't in an official relationship, even though it was kind of like behavior wise, it was acting like it. But I mean, at the end of the end of the two months, like he was a guy with the blade, which I spoke to you about uh, on a previous video. He ended up with a blade on him, so I couldn't see him anymore, obviously. And um, he went and told this guy who we knew, who worked in the shop that we both knew, that he was thinking about moving to live near me. And then he he went in the shop and goes, "Oh, she dumped me," and the guy said this to me. I'm like. I couldn't have dumped him because we weren't actually in a relationship. I said I couldn't see him again, but I couldn't dump him if because he kept saying we're only dating, we're not in a relationship. Do you know what I mean? Like it was just like only dating. So I accepted that for two months, right? Which is very weird for me, but I thought, whatever, okay. So he said he wasn't ready yet. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. And it and it's like, um, yeah, and it's like, I can't dump you if I wasn't in a relationship with you. So why go around saying horrible things, which, and in the end, I told the guy, I said, oh, did the guy actually know? Did you know why I said I wouldn't see him again? Did you actually know? Did he tell you about the blade? And I told him all the story about what happened with the blade. And he's like, oh, no, I didn't know that. I said, exactly. So there's no way I could have stayed seeing a guy like that. Do you know what I mean? Um. 
example, Kyle is dating Sophie, their boyfriend and girlfriend. You see, that wouldn't be normal, though, in dating. That's not what dating means. Jake is going on a date with Sally. Jake is going on a date with Sally. Then Tommy from Kick going on dates to see whom they like more, usually from dating sites or from speed dating places. But dating usually means the same thing. If Kai is dating Sophie, they wouldn't be boyfriend and girlfriend. They, they'd be in a relationship because they're not dating anymore. They've decided to be exclusive to each other. Whereas Jake is going on a date with Sally. Is it Jake's dating Sally because he's going on a date with her. Like, like, even what does it say on um, a dictionary? Like, let's look it up. Right, okay. I've got an American dictionary in my in my thing. Let's have a look. Dating in US means you're in a relationship with them. I know you say that, but I didn't. I've never known that. Um, but let's look it up in the dictionary because I've got an American dictionary. Some. <laughs> Right. Okay, they've got, obviously, they've got the word date, right? Okay, what does it say? The day of the month. A social date, a social or romantic appointment or engagement, a college student on a date with someone he met in class, a person with whom one has a social or romantic engagement. My date isn't going to show, it seems. Um, verb, establish or ascertain the date of the date. Uh, Indicate or suppose as being old-fashioned, seemingly old-fashioned, a movie that will date quickly. Three, go out with someone in whom one is romantically or sexually interested. My sister's pretty judgmental about the girls I date. They have been dating for more than a year. So go out with someone in whom one is romantically or sexually interested. My sister's pretty, so they have been dating for more than a year. So yeah, so basically, there's on here. This is the this is the USA English. No, this isn't. See, this is the American dictionary. I don't have British. I have British. You know, I have in uh, American English on here. And according to this, it's go out with someone, someone who they're romantically or sexually interested in. Uh, see, interest is not the same as being in a relationship with Middle English. Yeah, what does it say on Wikipedia? Because obviously I need to know this stuff. Dating. For other uses, see dating and double dating. Right, dating is a stage. This is what Wikipedia says, so let's see what it says. Dating is a stage of romantic relationships in humans whereby two people meet socially with the aim of each assessing the other's suitability as a prospective partner in an intimate relationship. It is a form of courtship consisting of social activities done by the couple either alone or with others. The protocols and practices of dating and the terms used to describe it vary considerably from country to country and over time. While the term has several meanings, the most frequent usage refers to two people exploring whether they are romantically or sexually compatible by participating in dates with the other. Um, with the use of modern technology, people can date by a telephone or computer or meet in person. Dating might also involve two or more people who have already decided that they share romantic or sexual feelings towards each other. These people have dates on a regular basis and they may or may not be having sexual relations. This period of courtship is sometimes seen as a precursor uh, to engagement. Some cultures require people to wait until a certain age to begin dating, which has been a source of controversy. Uh, dating in US means you're in a relationship with um, Google. What does it mean to be dating someone? Well, I've just gone to Wikipedia, but I will Google that for you as well. Uh, oh, new window. Let's see. I got to do. Oh, uh, no, I can't do that because that's coming up with a new dictionary. Um, right, okay. 
I'll still main on my live stream. I'm still live streaming while going to Google at the same time. Uh, right. Because I obviously I can't see show you what I'm doing because I can't show you the screen. Um, but yeah, Google. So in Google, uh, dating someone. Right. Googling. The definition of dating shows us that there's a difference between dating someone and just dating. Dating means you're going on dates, you are actively getting out there and meeting people and spending time with them. Dating someone means seeing somebody specific with purpose and on a regular basis. There is there a difference between dating and being in a relationship? The main difference between dating and being in a relationship is that people in a relationship are connected by a mutual commitment to each other. You and the person you're with have agreed, either officially or unofficially, that you're seeing each other exclusively and are in a partnership together. That's the difference. Yeah, so in a relationship, you're saying you're boyfriend and girlfriend. You agree you're in a relationship. So according to the that, I'm correct. If you Google it, dating someone is where you're having dates, you're seeing someone over a period of time, and, you know, you're dating someone with a view to potentially be in a relationship, seeing if they're right for the person or not. Whereas being in a relationship means you've decided to be mutually exclusive and in a relationship together as partners, which you have, boyfriend and girlfriend. So according to Google, I am correct. That's what it says. So, yeah. That's the difference. Being in a relationship is when you've decided, I'm your boyfriend, I'm your girlfriend. We're exclusive with each other in a relationship, whereas dating is where you're seeing each other. Like, I was dating a guy for two months. We were actually in a relationship. I think teens are changing the definition. Well, someone's doing something, because dating, as far as I know, has always meant that same thing, you know? That's, that's the whole point of dating. You date someone to see if they're right for you to be in a relationship with before committing. Dating is the term, but when you are in a relationship, you should still go on dates together to keep it fresh. You should have date nights. But that's not the same as just dating, which is literally a precursor to see if you're interested in being in a relationship together. So you're already in a relationship together. So, but you can still go on dates, even though you're in a relationship. You should go on dates together to keep the relationship alive and fresh. I picked up what I think it means from what teens have said in school. Well, they need to get educated, don't they? That's all I can say. I mean, I don't know where they're learning this stuff from. Do you know what I mean? Like, I I, I um, learned from dating coaches. Like, I'm constantly, every week, I have people on YouTube that are dating coaches. They do it for a, they do it for a living. They teach people how to have relationship skills. And I, I literally go through every week and watch and listen to some dating information and advice all the time so I can improve myself, you know? I mean, it might be that some people call it different things, but generally, you know, it's, it's, it's worldwide knowledge what dating means because there's dating sites all over the place. Like if I register somewhere, like I register on asexual dating sites. That's what it means, dating, although some asexuals use some dating sites for social networking as well, which isn't what most people do. You know, on a normal, heteronormative dating site, you know, you go on there looking for a relationship. That's the whole point. Teens call their girlfriend or boyfriend bae. Yeah, that's common, B-A-E, but it means something very different in a different country. That's why I don't use it. I have heard of B-A-E, though. I've heard of that, even though I live in the UK I have heard of it but it might just be that some people you know but it does it does uh dating someone means you're seeing some specific but yeah I was date I was dating someone wasn't I so yeah so basically you can be dating as in general dating or you can be dating someone specific but you're not actually in a relationship you two are in a relationship together aren't you because you're boyfriend and girlfriend Teens call their boy, um, the new age is where young generation is changing things. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Uh, are they changing it or are they just getting it wrong because they're misinformed, miseducated? 
Do you know what I mean? That's what you've got to ask yourself. Are they changing things or are they just ill-informed and miseducated? Do you know what I mean? I mean, you know, like you say, though, there are people that call different things different things in different places. Um, sometimes it is in stupid ways. I mean, the Wikipedia definition says something about in some countries they call things different. Um, and it can be seen as a prequel to engagement. But general terms, dating is usually always used for sussing out where someone's right to be in a relationship. Well, that's what it's called dating. So, you know, uh, if you're dating someone, you're dating. So you can, you can, you can be dating as in general dating, and you can be dating someone specific. But when you're past the stage of dating, is when you've declared you're in a relationship together. Pop culture, yeah. But dating someone is always usually when you're actually dating someone is is when you're um is when you are you know dating a specific person before you're agreeing to get in a relationship. So I can do general dating, or I can do like uh, exclusive dating. But unless the person asks you to be in a relationship with them, which you have, who's your boyfriend and girlfriend, you're in a relationship now, so you're past the dating stage of, you know. Teens through the old vocab out the window. Yeah, but it's not really it's not it's not really vocabulary, is it? It's it's what is a definition of terms. Do you know what I mean? But you know, I don't know if they're just misinformed or ill guided, do you know what I mean? Sometimes you can get things like Chinese whispers. They just change what they say, do you know what I mean, from what it originally was. It's like people are ill-educated about sex, aren't they? Everyone is told in school they have to have sex pretty much as part of a relationship. That's how you grow up. They're ill. People are so ill-educated. They don't, you know, there's, there's been people in history, like when I went to the UK Asexual Conference last year and I was a speaker there, they did the history of asexuality and it was da it was dating back years. They used to have um, things in in books about the fact they had a relationship. Yeah, sex isn't a need, it's a want. But apparently it's on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But yes, it's not a need. I agree because need is like something you like water, oxygen and food to live that's a need because you die without it someone's not going to die because they don't have sex although if no one ever had sex you could argue that the whole population would die because that's how we procreate which is why they think sex is a need i guess but obviously there's more ways nowadays to have kids you need food water shelter o2 clothes shelter yeah but clothes obviously some people could argue you don't need clothes couldn't they but you know in terms of in terms of like I agree that sex isn't need, it's a want, but there is one but, as in the sense that if ev no one had sex ever, then we wouldn't be alive. I wouldn't be alive if my parents hadn't had sex. So I have to hold my hat off to people that do have sex and give birth, because even though I don't want to give birth myself, if my parents hadn't been heterosexual and they didn't want a baby, I wouldn't be here now helping you guys out. Want to hear something funny? Jurassic Park meme. Girls will rule the world. It could happen. <laughs> well, girls ha kind of do rule the world. They, they're they the ones who give birth, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? Blokes can't give birth. Well, obviously, blokes that used to be female, they've still got female parts, could be give birth. But an actual cis-born female is, like, the one who can, like, give birth the most. Do you know what I mean? Scientists found a way to use females' bone marrow to impregnate the same girl or another girl. Ugh. Sorry, I hate pregnancy. I'm pregnancy repulsed. I just like, ugh. But we do have to... I forget. I do forget that people procreate through sex. I forget that. <laughs> That's why, you know, in order to keep the population alive, people do need to have sex or find... But there's other ways of having babies now, do you know what I mean? Without sex, without intercourse, but you still have to have a man or woman's... So in theory, sperm isn't needed anymore. Scientists found a way to use female bone marrow to impregnate the same girl or another girl. Well, how can they do that? The sperm is what ignites with the... Uh, 
with the egg to create a baby. You can't create a baby out of bone marrow unless you're talking about genetically like cloning someone or something. You can't you can't have a baby made from bone marrow unless you're cloning it, I wouldn't have thought, because a sperm and an egg is how you make a baby in the first place. I don't know of any other way. You know, like obviously if you're if you're not wanting intercourse, then the woman still has to have sperm put in her body, doesn't she? Which is why they stick it with a turkey baster in there or whatever they do. It's like, it's like I don't even like talking about pregnancy and stuff like this. It makes me squirm. But um so I don't see how they could do it from bone marrow unless it was to do with um genetically cloning them. Do you know what I mean? Not actually producing a new thing. Scientists changed the DNA of the bone marrow and insert it into the ch scientists changed the DNA of this is really interesting. Scientists changed the DNA of the bone marrow and insert it into the egg and create a new being, it may not be an entire clone if you end up altering it with procedures. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> but I think, I think you have to, I, I have to remember that if I hadn't got two heterosexual parents, I wouldn't be alive right now. Do you know what I mean? So that is down to sex, the fact I'm here in the first place. Do you know what I'm saying? So sex has its place, I guess. And I guess well, that's why they call it a need, if you think about it. Uh, you can add others' DNA with it and add specific qualities you want and take out what you don't want. You see, I'm not a fan of that. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a fan of... I'm not a fan of, like, trying to make something specific. I'm like, you know, like I personally, if there was like, like they want us all to have an implant, right? Like in years to come, they want us to go have brain implants and stuff like that. I was like, I don't want that. I would rather be perfectly imperfect than someone trying to change my brain and stuff and doing stuff to it. I don't want to be a test tube. Do you know what I mean? They are still testing it. But if it works to perfection, girls wouldn't need men to procreate. Hmm. Yeah, but what type of thing's going to come out? Is it still going to be a human being? <laughs> yeah. So the scene in Jurassic Park cracks me up even more. I don't know if I can remember the scene in Jurassic Park. I don't know <laughs> about pregnancy. What is, what is it, the dinosaur and the egg you're talking about or what? Because um, I'm trying to think now of a scene in Jurassic Park where there's bo bone marrow and I don't think there is, is there? While well, they're trying to make trying to make things out kids out of bone marrow i don't think there is in jurassic park is there i like the last jurassic park movie that was really good I really enjoyed that it's a very good storyline actually um but yeah so i think you know i personally i mean it, everyone's got different opinion but you know the guy who i was with the blade guy he was like really wanting everyone in the world to have implants in their brain that really freaked me out i said well you wouldn't catch me doing that there's absolutely no way i'd want someone manipulating my mind and putting a microchip he's like oh but you can get, get extra powers by putting microchips in your brain like and you know you can read faster and you can learn faster and it's like but i'd rather be an imperfect human being than be a robot. I love robots. I've got fascination with robots. I absolutely love robotic films. I love robots, but I don't want to be one myself. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'd rather be an imperfect human being. If, if I was in a movie and they had, like, everyone's trying to make all humans into robots, I would be like, on the rebel side. Like, no, you're not messing with my brain. Get out of there. I want my brain as my brain. I don't want my brain to be brainwashed. Or if it's going to be brainwashed, I want to do the brainwashing, not some implant banks. God creates dinosaurs. God destroys dinosaur. God creates man. Man destroys God. Man creates dinosaur. Dinosaur eat men. Women inherit the earth because all the dinos were supposedly female. What? <laughs> Let me try to read that again. God creates dinosaur. God destroys dinosaur. God creates man. Man destroys God. But does I don't think man has destroyed God. God's everywhere. You can't destroy God. He's and it's in God is indestructible. So you can't destroy God. He's just everywhere, isn't he? God, energy, universe, whatever you want to call it. So I don't think that's true. 
Um, man creates dinosaur. Dinosaur eats men, women, earth. Destroying sense of no faith anymore. There's loads of people that have faith in God. Loads of people. Tons of them. I see them all over Facebook. Some of them trying to connect with me that are like really, like I believe in God, but I'm not like uh, strictly religious and I don't believe in the Holy Spirit personally. And, um, and you know, I don't go around trying to preach to other people about that. It's like personal just for me. Do you know what I mean? So it's going down each year. That surprises me because the mo amount of people I see talk about God all the time, but some of them do it in not a good way. I don't know if you've ever been on, well, you do go on Twitter in my life. There are lots of people, guys, sadly on Twitter, that try and use Twitter as a dating site. We're talking about dating again. And literally they try and chat with women on Twitter and they'll, they'll, they will put in their profile. They're really dodgy. They will usually have worked for the army or some other uh, military service. They usually put in their profile they're divorced or divorced with a son to make you your heartstrings pull even more. And then they will say, so I'm a God fearing man. And really, they just basically the profiles that they set up, they're very, very similar. Obviously, ridiculously uh, accounts that just are after, you know, relationships online, which is all to do with sex, really. And um, the words they use are just like a template. And it's like, I'm a widow. I worked for the, I worked for the like army or I worked for the military and now I'm a widowed, but I'm a God fearing man and I'm honest and kind and caring. And it's just like bullshit, excuse my language, to get you interested in their profile. So you think, oh, God fearing is to do with God. That's really nice. Oh, I'll, I'll friend him. And then they get a private message saying, hi, how are you? And they and they just there to chat you up because they're single and they have got nothing better to do with their lives, um, and and just like do some weird stuff. No, to put out there to everyone, just because someone believes in God does not make them a good person. Exactly, that's what I was trying to say, uh, but maybe I didn't say that. So they on Twitter they are using the word God fearing as a le leverage to get someone to click on their profile and commit to following them because only on twitter um the majority of the time unless you've got your settings you can change the settings unless you click to follow a person they can't private message you on twitter depending on your settings i think you can change the settings to anyone can message you but in general you can't message a person if they're not connected to you so they'll put things like i'm a widow i you know um i i, I served in the military because serving in the military obviously people think oh He's, you know, that people can think that's a good thing. They served in their country. They helped fight. You know, they're a great person. And then they put God fearing because they, they, they're trying to latch onto the fact that, you know, if they're to do with God, they must be a good person. Like my life said, they're not. But these are the people that aren't. They are just literally these people. They're writing the same type of script just to literally get people on Twitter engaged in a relationship with them. That's all they do. I've had the guys and I just start blocking them and unfollowing them again. So when you unfollow them, they can't speak to you. Um, someone could believe in God, but be abusive or a criminal. Exactly. They could, my life. It's totally true. Um, I used to go to youth club years ago, church youth club, because my boyfriend at the time, he used to and his family, but he wasn't a good guy. Just because some, someone believes in God doesn't mean they follow the Bible. Well, I don't follow the Bible. I believe in God. So there you go. I'm a prime example, aren't I? I don't read the Bible, so I don't follow it, I'm guessing, because I don't even know what's in it. So I don't read the Bible. You know, God's different things to different people, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Um, I have my own belief. Very, very, very limited belief. But you're a good person with morals. Thank you, my life. Yeah, I do happen to be. I have to agree with you on that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And some of you, you know, I'm spiritual as well. I'm more spiritual than religious. And some people, they're like, you've got to be spiritual or believe in God. You can't do both. And I'm like, well, no, actually, that's not true with me. I'm totally both. Like, I think they work hand in hand, to be quite honest with you. Uh, for me, the seven deadly sins and 10 commandments are not just religious, but also spiritual. I'm both. Yeah. 
I think you can definitely, definitely be both. Oh, God, I'm getting a bit dry now off my throat. I think you definitely, definitely be both, you know? I'm going to put some water. I know it's a live stream, but hey, I need water. I'm over drinking water. It's good to keep hydrated, people. Uh, water flushes toxins out of your body. Seeing as we're talking <laughs> about water, and um, it makes you have more energy, water does as well. So top up on water. Get rid of the toxins in your body. Bottled water, not tap water. Beliefs can stand alone or attached to religion. I think that's quite true. I think that is quite true. I think you're right, my life. Yeah. I think it's important that people do know they can be spiritual and religious at the same time or spiritual and believe in God at the same time. People don't. And, you know, like some people, there's like this divide, isn't there, between God and the Big Bang. It's like, why can't both happen? The Big Bang happens and then you get God. God is the Big Bang. They're both the same thing. I don't understand why people are like one or the other. I'm like, to me, it's like, I think they're the same thing pretty much. I think there was bang. God's there. <laughs> you know what I mean, they happen at the same time. They are the same thing. But then that's my own opinion. I just don't see how they're different, to be honest. Uh, I think they can happen at the same time simultaneously. But I don't really get involved too much in that because I don't usually talk about religion that much. It's really weird because I don't usually talk about religion. Then all of a sudden lately on this channel, like the last seven days, I think I've talked about religion more than anything. Not more than anything, anything, but I mean more than the rest of the time because I don't usually talk about it because it's like everyone is so... You're a grey Jedi Christian. I have no idea what a grey Jedi Christian is because, like I said, I'm not really that religious. I just believe in... Well, I just have about two beliefs and that's about it, really. Um, yeah, so, you know, I don't know what a grey Jedi Christian is. I don't even, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not christened or baptised either because my parents left... Because my parents are Christians, but they left... So, theoretically, I'm Christian as well. Um, and I am Christian more than anything else. Grey Jedi is my beliefs Christian is Grey Jedi is my beliefs Christian is my religion. Huh? Grey Jedi is my beliefs Christian is my Oh, Grey Jedi is your beliefs and Christian is your religion. Oh right, okay. I have no idea what Grey Jedi means. But it sounds like something out of Star Wars, if I may say so. Do you know what I mean? Like Jedi is to do with Star Wars. Um from a kid but yes we've really gone on topic off topic now <laughs> to do with uh what was this oh yeah this was uh how to let go of a friend well say goodbye to a best friend and the right way to do it um which i think i actually covered in most of the first hour of this video which was in summary uh was to like grieve because it's like they're going away so you know you might not see them again hopefully you will but, you know, you've got to, like, get all the crying out because I have to say, I've always said on this channel, it's better out than in. You know, you need to get, you know, people are like, oh, I can't cry. I've got to hold it in. Oh, it's no good. It's like, no, you don't hold it in. You just get rid of crying. Jedi, oh, Jedism and Sithism are actually official beliefs and religions. Most Jedis and Siths agree it's a belief system, not religion. Oh, right. Okay. I mean, when I was at school, I studied religion because I had to uh, as part of one of my options because I had to choose something. I wasn't, like several of them I wasn't that bothered about, but you had to pick so many subjects. So I'd say religion. I studied Buddhism, Judaism and Christianity. And I liked studying all three of them, actually. It's very, very interesting. I got quite interested in all three of those religions, not just Christianity. Buddhism was very interesting. Jedi, uh, Je uh, Jedi. I'm talking about Jedi now. Judaism was very, very interesting. The Torah Scrolls, very, very, very interesting. Watch this documentary. Uh, Grey Jedi is in between, and it's whatever you make it, as long as it's balanced more to light than it is dark. Unlike Dark Jedi. All right. Um. Yeah. I try. I always have a light life. I don't. You know, I led a very dark life for years when I was depressed. And I always now look towards the light. I'm about positivity, speaking positively, having positive people in my life, talking about positive things as much as possible, doing positive things. 
just basically being love, light, positivity. And that's what I focus on. I go away from the dark. Darkness is not good. Um, even though you can't have light without dark. So it's good in the sense that, you know, you've got to have some dark with the light because life needs dark to have light. Theoretically, in that way, it's good. But, you know, there will be dark things that happen, but you like them or not. So it's better to shower yourself with as much light and positivity and happiness as possible. So when darkness comes, you're ready for it. Do you know what I mean? Because you've got so much light, you're beaming that even if some darkness comes in for a while, it's, it's not going to overpower your light because your light's too strong. I think that's really important. Do you know what I mean? Really important. So I'm going to sum up um, before I go off because I think it's important because we've got quite a few people watching and they're probably thinking, why am I digressing into so much stuff? But I think it's nice. It's really important that we have good discussions on this channel like we usually do. And uh, do we do veer off on tangents sometimes because it's important, isn't it, to talk in the moment about different stuff. I mean, this is what this channel is all about, isn't it? Live chat, you know what I mean, with a real asexual person, you know. So it always makes me laugh when people go, I asexual's real. I'm like, um, mm, last time I looked, I was. Do you know what I mean? I'll see you another time, my friend. Yeah, I'm just going to wrap up now. I'm going to do a summary quickly because obviously people might not have, um, come in at the end of the video. I mean that people might come at the end of the video, not the beginning. So in summary, of basically how to deal with your saying goodbye to your best friend, right? Grieve. Obviously, you might not want to blubber all over them. You can if you want. But, you know, make sure you have your own time to grieve, to be upset, to let the pain out, to let that out. It's, it's going to be a bit hurtful. Bye at my life. Uh, nice to see you. It's going to be a bit hurtful. It's going to be a bit painful. You know, even where if even if they're moving away, you know, they're moving to another country. Obviously, it's going to be really, really upsetting for you. If they're still in the same country, then, you know, it's possible to still see them. There is Skype. There is phoning. There is messaging. It depends how responsive the other friend is to you with that. But, you know, you have to, like, kind of come to terms with the fact that if you don't see them again, you have to be prepared for that. You know, you do have to prepare yourself for that. You know, you have to have the mindset, if I see them again, it will be a blessing. I will try. They will try, hopefully, you know. But... It depends how they've left as well, whether they've left and wanted to keep in contact with you or not. OK, but you have to like, you know, grieve because it is a grieving process. You have to like literally get your upset and pain out as much as possible, you know, and then you have to never, like I said before, never come in between someone and their partner. So if their partner, you know, whatever their partner is like, even if they haven't known them a long while, because my best friend hasn't known this guy a long while, you still need to be polite to their partner, get to know their partner as well, as much as possible, if you're able to. And, you know, try and be a friend to both of them, not just your best friend. Don't cut their partner out because that's the worst thing you can do because you usually always someone's side of their partner, even if you've known them a long time. I've known my best friend seven years, but even in some of her other relationships, you know, a boyfriend should be protective over. And it's natural. This is just what happens in relationships. If they, someone's got a romantic partner, they will literally take priority in their life. They will literally believe everything that that partner says usually. And they will literally, you know, put them on a pedestal quite a bit as well, where rightly or wrongly, that's what happens. And they will literally, you know, like you don't want to get in between the 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 your best friend and their partner. You want to support your best friend as much as possible be there for them whatever they choose to do whatever they decide because they will thank you for it later because even if they do split up with them later they don't want i told you so do you know what i mean you don't want to be that type of person you just want to be supportive understanding kind caring and get to know their partner even if you're not keen on them get to know them because if you love your friend as a friend then you will have to try and care about their partner because it means the world to them do you see what i mean so make sure you include their partner in things like if you write Christmas cards and things like that. You know, not everyone celebrates Christmas, but, you know, if you're writing stuff or getting presents and things, you know, try and include their partner as much as possible. So you're acknowledging their partner because you want your best friend to feel like their partner, you understand, is special to them. So therefore... The whole scenario of them being with their partner is special to you because it means the world to them. Do you see what I mean? So you always, because whatever happens to that relationship with their partner, if you go the bad way and go, oh, I don't like your partner, they're horrible, blah, 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 they're usually going to rebel against you. 
even if you've known them for a very, very long amount of years, they will you should always side with the partner and rebel against you and you'll split up friends over it. You know, and I don't want that to happen to you. And I know it's harsh and I know there's loads of aromantic asexuals that may not understand this aromantic, meaning, you know, they lack romantic attraction as well as sexual attraction, you know, aromantic asexuals we're talking about here. And so it's hard to grasp why anyone would put a romantic relationship above a friendship if you've been friends with someone for years. But this is what it's like. People do that. I'm telling you, it's the reality. So you don't want to come in between someone, your friend and their partner, their new partner, even if their partner, like this partner that my friend's moving in with, they've known them about six weeks. They're leaving their friends, their, their, their home and everything, jobs to go and be with this person, right? And I just want them to be happy. So long as he makes her happy, I'm really happy for both of them. I'm pleased. I'm elated. She's got everything she wants. I'm really happy. And that's how you have to do as well. You have to let your friend go with love, even if it hurts. Don't start getting into arguments before you leave, because that's the last thing you want. You do not want to end up on bad terms because you do not want them leaving your life for good. You want them to stay in contact and encourage that, even if they choose not to. You want to encourage that, right? So you want to be talking nicely to them. You want to be loving them. Even if you're angry, they're leaving. You you just need to say, I'm going to miss you. I love you. I care about you. I'm going to miss you. You know, I, I love seeing you. You know, I understand what you're doing. I understand it's going to be an amazing opportunity for you. I'm really happy for you, but I am going to miss you. And say how you truly feel. Don't get defensive and start having a go at them because you're really angry. They're moving away and hurt and pain because that's the thing you can do, you know. You can be so full of hate, you know, not well, not hate for them, but the situation so full of pain, you know, and misery that you that that comes out as an argument instead. And um, you lose that friend, for you know, that you've known for years because they're just like, well, I've got a new life now and I can't be bothered with this drama. So if you want to be like that, I'm going anyway, because they've made their mind up. They're going so they, they can just leave you behind. You don't want that. You just want to treat them with love, kindness and careness. and say thank you for everything you've done thanks for being a best friend and you know um I would still like to see you in the future sometime I still like to be in touch with you, you know I still care about you and you know but make sure you know that you're okay with them being with their partner even if you know that you're thinking oh my god I'm not sure it's gonna work I'm not sure this person's the right person for them or even if you found out they're not good you still have to support your best friend because it's their decision who they're with at the end of the day, not yours. And sadly, they will you should always choose the partner over you, even if you've been friends for you. So never, ever get between a person and their partner. Just don't do it. Be supportive. Be kind, caring. Invite their partner along to things or go to see them with their partner there even if you find it difficult. Because you know, sometimes I just want to see my friend on my own. I don't want to see her with a partner. But you can't say that, you know. If they're together, if, you, if they live together as well in a house, you can't say, oh, sorry, I want your partner out of the way. You can't do that, you know. So you kind of have to be friends to both of them. You have to get like their partner needs to be kind of your friend as well. Even if they're not your really good friend because your best friend your best friend, you have to kind of be friends with the person, with their partner, because you need to try and make it work, you know. That's what you do when you care about someone as their, your friend. You care about them, their health and well-being. You support them all the way. And you're always there for them. To, you know, so if something goes wrong, you're there for them. Not to tell you them, I told you so. But just, just be there and support them and say, I understand it. I understand your pain. I care about you. You know, and if everything goes well, you just carry on saying, I'm so happy for you. I'm really happy for you. Couldn't be happier. I think it's amazing. You know, so just really be positive with them. Because people get attracted to people who are attractive, who give good vibe out, who make them feel good about themselves. So, you know, I, I learned the law of attraction is inspiration and action. If you inspire someone to have a good life, you inspire someone to feel good about their life. If you inspire someone to be happy with the friendship, if you, you know, put out good vibes, put out happiness and well-being vibes and really, really truly care about the person you know that person will be attracted to you back they'll think oh I'm getting good vibes from this person every time I'm with them every time I see them they're supportive they're you know they're egging me on saying come on you're doing really well 
and I feel really loved and supported by them and I'm drawn to them because people get drawn to people who make them feel good about themselves, who validate them and make them feel good about themselves. So the more you do that and, and you know, stick with them, the better it is, you know. You just say, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I think it's really good you've made this decision for you. I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. You look really happy. You look awesome. You know, I'm really pleased for you because all that positivity, they're going to know that they can come back to you if things do go wrong. They're not going to be scared of, because the worst thing you want to do as well is scare your friend into thinking they can't tell you if anything is going wrong. I mean, if the person does end up abusive, you want them to be able to eventually open up to you about that and know that they won't be judged for it and know that it'll just be like, OK, that's going on, is it? OK, so how do you feel about it? What you can, you know, wanting to do about it and all that type of thing, you know? You can't go around hell for leather going give it, you know, give me, give me a, I don't know, let me go around there and sort them out. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of like you, not unless they're of the mindset that that person is bad for them and they want to leave them. You can't do that. You have to be supportive, kind and caring at all times, positive vibes, make them feel good about themselves, make them feel happy about themselves because they will come back to you. If you're making this thing bad, they don't want to be around you. They'll be like, I'm off. Why should I stay? I've got nothing to stay here for. Why should I stay friends with this person? This person's offering me a lot more. This person made me feel bad. If you feel make them feel good, if something goes wrong with their partner or they're not feeling good about them, they'll come back to you because they'll be like, hang on a minute, my happiness is with this person. The person I'm with isn't making me happy anymore. So they'll automatically go back to the people that make them happiest. And that's why in relationships as well, you should always try and be making the other person feel good and special and happy. Because if you're putting out that vibration to them, they'll be drawn back to you. They'll want to stay with you. They'll want to be in a relationship with you continuously because you make them feel so happy. So why wouldn't they? Do you know what I mean? If you can make them happy as much as possible, you're not going to be able to make them happy 24-7 because it's just impossible, right? You're not going to get everything right. You know, you're going to cock up sometimes. But the majority of the time, if they're always feeling good about you, more good than not, they're going to want to still stay with you and be with you. You know, positive vibes, happy times, and they'll be drawn to you. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful, helpful, insightful in some way. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. I really, really love the thumbs up because it helps these videos to get up in search engine rankings, get asexuality better known, which is the, my main goal and mission, you know, to get it better recognised throughout the globe as a sexual orientation in its own right. So no asexual has to live in fear of ridicule ever again, and we can live happily among sexuals. Oh, thank you, Andy. You stay till the end, my friend. Oh, lots of love. Lots of love to you. Thank you so much. It's really nice of you. You've been on this stream for like one hour and 46 minutes with me. Thank you so much because I know you've had a busy day today. And I've already said bye to my life. And there was another guy called Aaron or person called Aaron earlier. So bye to them. And bye to whoever else is watching. Lots of love to you all. Bye. Thanks, Andy, for watching. Really appreciate you. Take care, everyone. Bye.